these laws exist, and he, he read the possibility, you know, the war crimes problem that these people might face. He warned them that, that some of the officials might have trouble traveling abroad in the future. David Addington, Cheney's chief of staff and Vice President Cheney himself. Well, yeah, I mean, the thing is that these are legal fights, and um, the, there's always another side. And the vice president and his lawyer felt that, in their view, the president should be able to do anything in order to protect the country. I mean, and I, th th that is why they did these things, and they also had a very robust idea of what the president's power should be anyway. They've been, they've been missing the full, the full imperial presidency since the Nixon years. And so they basically expanded the powers of the presidency to be above many of the treaties that we've signed. Can we talk about who died in custody and what happened to the reports about them, like, for example, Al Janadi, who yeah, he was? Yeah, I mean, this is another thing. When you, you read the statement from President Bush on um, September 6, 2006, saying that these methods are safe, well, there were people who were killed in this program, and one of them was an Iraqi. Uh, former Iraqi military figure named Manadel al Jamadi, who was completely healthy the night that he was picked up by the U.S. military and the CIA. By the morning, by dawn, he was dead. And according to the coroner's report, while he was being interrogated, in particular by the CIA, he was hung in a position that the uh, that the coroner described as being crucified, and he suffocated. He died. He he had broken ribs. He couldn't breathe, and he couldn't breathe in that position. So was it safe? Um, it certainly wasn't safe for Manadel Al Jamadi. There were a number of other homicides that have been investigated by the CIA and passed on to the Justice Department for possible prosecution. Nothing's ever come of them. Well, the report on Jamadi, the CIA's report, it did it get released? Oh no, and it's been no, it's 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 of course um, all of these these reports have been kept secret. So, uh, you know, I, the 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 Justice Department is in a very ticklish position about prosecuting these cases, though, because the Justice Department provided the the rationale for this program. Sheikh Ibn Ali uh, Libby, who says he lied to stop the torture. Many of the detainees have said they lied to stop the torture. Sheikh Ibn al-Libi um, was perhaps the, one of the most fateful cases because he was taken into custody by the CIA, sent to, the, sent to Egypt, um, where he was basically beaten up. While he was in Egypt, um, this was before the war in Iraq, uh, he was asked, are there weapons of mass destruction in Iraq? And are there connections between al-Qaeda and Saddam Hussein? He later said he had absolutely no idea. He didn't even really know what weapons of mass destruction were. But he told his interrogators whatever he, they wanted to hear. And what he told the interrogators made its way into Colin Powell's speech to the UN, which was one of the major turning points in selling the war in Iraq. Um, February 5, 2003, five weeks before the invasion. Right. And it was a speech that was very powerful, convinced an awful lot of people who were on the fence about whether we needed to go to war. One of the things Powell talks about in that speech is the information that came from Al Libby saying that there was WMD and that there were connections between terrorists and from Al Qaeda and Saddam Hussein. Almost one year after Powell's speech, the same detainee, Sheikh Ibn Al Libby, recanted. He told the CIA he made it up. He said he had to say something because they, he, they were killing him. You know, one of the things, though, that I think people haven't picked up on in that story is not only the disinformation that came out of this program, but that there were really doubts about Al Libby at the time that Powell gave that speech. And Powell was not told about the doubts. The DIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency, already suspected that Al Libby was fabricating things because his, his um, confessions were, lacked all the kind of detail that's convincing. And the DIA was sounding an alarm. Um, but Powell wasn't told about this when he gave his speech. And what was Cheney's role? Well, Cheney vetted the speech, <laughs> so um, he was he his office was into just deeply involved in almost all of these issues. In, you know, David Addington was up in Congress not very long ago, um, and he testified. And again, people didn't pick up on this much, but he said, as kind of an aside, that he was very involved in the CIA's interrogation program, which is extraordinary. Now, why is the lawyer for the vice president 
involved in the CIA's interrogation program. Well, when, when the history of this is told, and I did my best to tell it in the dark side, you'll see there's sort of fingerprints from Cheney and the people in his office all over this program. You talk about Cheney's involvement um, with the CIA Inspector General, uh, John Hogerson. Can you explain? Yeah. Um, in the spring of 2004, the Inspector General at the CIA, who was supposed to act as kind of an independent watchdog, put out a report, a, you know, a confidential report. But the report was the size of two Manhattan phone books, I've had it described to me, and filled with really disturbing information about things going wrong in the CIA's interrogation program. He had serious legal questions about whether there were crimes being committed. And when this report was circulated into a few hands in the top of the government, including Cheney's, Cheney's reaction was to call the inspector general in to his office for a private chat. Now, I don't know exactly what happened, but I can say from having interviewed other inspectors general from the CIA, including Fred Hitz, this is really unusual. The vice president called in the man who was supposed to be the independent voice of the CIA to talk to him about this report. Um, I've talked to the CIA about it. They say that Helgerson felt no political pressure from the vice president. Um, that's not what some of my sources say at the CIA. My sources have said that that was an incredibly politicized office. Do you think uh, Vice President Cheney should be charged with war crimes? You know, I, this is so not uh, the kind of <laughs> question that I can answer as a reporter. My job is to figure out what the facts are here, put the facts together, put them in front of the American people, and let people decide what they want to do about this. You know, all you I can ask for. Bush should be. You know, again, I, it's just completely not my kind of call. Um, what I want personally, I want the facts. I want to be able to get the records, get the memos that are still secret, um, s find out as much as we can about this interrogation program. And I'd like to see a debate, and I think it's developing in the campaign, about whether this country, which was founded on the idea of everybody having inalienable human rights, whether this is the right thing for our country to be doing, to be hurting people to get them to testify against themselves. What were you most shocked by in the research for your articles and the articles leading up to this book and the Bach book? You know, I mean, not shocked, but surprised in one good way, actually, which I think people will think is, you know, that this is all depressing. I was really moved and surprised by the number of courageous people in this country, inside the administration, inside other parts of the government, the FBI officers, the military officers, um, there are people down in Guantanamo who stood up and said, we're better than this. This is wrong. We're not going to do this. There are people who risked their careers. There were lawyers in the Justice Department, one after another, who they felt so worried about opposing the vice president. At one point, several of the top lawyers in the administration thought they were being uh, wiretapped because of that. Who? Uh, Jim Comey and um, Jack Goldsmith. You also said FBI agents were so appalled by Mitchell's actions they urged the FBI to arrest him. That, that is true. And there is, there is another FBI agent named Jim Clementi, whose story is in this book, who, who, who said this is a crime. You've got to stop it. We have to wrap it. Thanks so much. Jane Mayer, she's author of the book, The Dark Side. That does it for our broadcast. Democracy Now! produced by Shrew from Produce, Aaron Mate, Mike Burke, Anjali Comet. I'm Amy Goodman. Our website, democracynow.org. Thanks for joining us.